Welcome to game day on Ice Hockey UK TV in association with McDonald's. Behind me, GB stepping onto the ice for their first game. Their first game at the World Championship Division 1B. A massive game then against Croatia. Soon we'll see the highlights with Seth Bennett and Andy French. But it was a special day for five debutants and someone winning their 50th cap. Well, we went inside the dressing room and saw the special presentations. Something we started last year that everybody seemed to really like and we want to carry on doing going forward. Uh, it's a huge thing to, to represent Great Britain and um, I'm thrilled that there are five new caps that are playing today. And what we want to do is we want to present those five guys with a cap with their number on, which will be their number forever, their GB number. It's the order in which they made the first appearance for GB. Uh, Andy, General Secretary of Ice Hockey UK, has come to present the caps. Um, it is a very special honour, I think, to wear the GB line. And you're representing, you know, 57 million people when you pull on that shirt. And uh, it should be a special moment for everybody. So if we can call up the individuals who are going to win the first cap today, one at a time, and we'll present them with the first cap. So number 392, Josh Batch. Three ninety-three, Chris Blythe. Three ninety-four, Jonathan Boxhill. Three ninety-five, Matt Haywood. And three ninety-six, Jack Prince. Now the other thing we started doing is special caps when you get to 50, 75 or 100 caps. Uh, it's a major achievement to get to those numbers because we only count proper full caps, Olympic qualifiers and world championships. And uh, I'm delighted to say that uh, Mr David Phillips has reached 50 caps today. Fantastic guys, to so play well today, let's have a good opening game. Well here we go then, a new era in British hockey about to get underway. It is the 2015 Ice Hockey World Championships in Eindhoven. Great Britain's first hurdle is Croatia. GB with another chance out in front, stick press. Second opportunity, Shields misses though. Five on four to power play as one man's returned. Three and a half minutes to go, O'Connor steps in, opens it up, here's Weaver, too tight, O'Connor lets this one go off the blocker, rebound comes out and this could be danger, breaking hard this time down the ice, Croatia with a real chance on the backhand side, scores, short-handed, this time Glumich doesn't miss, having been denied twice earlier in the power play, another breakaway and Croatia take the lead. Zeretic opens up the ice. Berkovic into the zone. Berkovic shoots and scores. A bump of the fist. A power play goal. It took 18 seconds. And Perkovic doubles the lead of Croatia. On debut, Nathan Perkovic with a blast and bounce beaten. It's GB nil, Croatia two. That's not what we were looking for there. And uh, you know they picked up the puck, skated down the wing there. Shoots it, actually goes through Weaver's legs. And uh, I don't know if Bounds was screened by the position of Weaver, I'm not sure. On the replay, we're looking there, but blocker side, just above the face off circle, he shot it in from. You can see it again here. GB on the power play. Dowd will float one high. He's playing as one of the defensemen. As it goes off the glass, we'll stay in the zone for the face-off. Matthew Myers disagrees. It's a bit more desperation about how GB are playing right now. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we have to capitalise. You said like eight minutes to go, just under eight minutes to go in the period. And we 
need to get a goal off this power play to give us any chance of getting back in. Here's O'Connor. Why is this yes. one off? He scores! Ben O'Connor with a blast from the blue line. And GB are back in it as finally the power play pays. A huge smile on his face. He as after nearly, nearly six periods of hockey, GB finally breach Croatia and they cut the deficit in two. And there was Ben O'Connor trying to get off there, sent back out onto the ice for the power play. He deflects off Curry here. The defenseman steps out and he comes off his stick. Just as I was saying, he shot the puck. I was just saying we need a goal off this power play and there we go. We're one goal deficit, but we're getting back in here now. We've got, what, what was seven minutes? Yeah, shade over. Over seven minutes to go in the game. And that should give us that little lift that we were, not that we've needed one, but it just seems like, I think some of the guys are probably thinking that, is it ever going to come? Is that goal ever going to come? Here's Farmer. Feather pass the down in the zone. Down drives hard to the net, comes off the body. GB's net is empty away to our left-hand side. Into the final minute, trying to work it down. Right, the puck's there. Where is it? Is it going to be forced over the line? Cleared away, held in by Weaver. Backhand side, men out in front, side of the net. GB send this one hard across. Richardson is the man, down low. Quick shot again, tipped over the top. Rebound comes out again, held in by Weaver. Into the final 27. Weaver sidesteps his man. Some of those old silky skills. Richardson, hash marks left side. GB all offensive zone here. There's a huge battle going out in front with Matthew Myers. Time ticking though, final 12 seconds. Shot will come all the way through. Where's the rebound? Where is it? GB yeah. score! They force it home! And they've tied it with just five seconds to go! It may well have been Jack Prince who got the final touch. And it looks like we're going to overtime. Richardson will skate away towards the bench, but a huge, huge scramble. And the GB fans bounce. They do the Poznan, and Mark Richardson will get the credit. But what a shift where GB cranked, and they cranked, and they cranked. And finally, Croatia broke. They buckled. It's 2-2. Well, we said, didn't we? We did say that last... We said that last uh, five minutes, last ten minutes of this period, we've been, since we scored that goal, it's pressure, 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 pressure. And uh, five seconds remaining. Do you know what? Going into overtime, pulling Ben Bounce. Great call by the bench. Cowley, clean face off win. GB with O'Connor, Phillips, and Cowley out there. O'Connor goes to Richardson. Richardson, top of the circle. Five yes! Minutes. He's won it in overtime. A brace from Mark that Richardson. Was that was the play. And Great Britain broke in and they finished off. And they start their world championships with a win. Wow. And Pete Russell starts with a win as well. He hugs his support staff and punches the air. And GB are in a massive melee on the far side, right in front of their own supporters. An inspirational 50 seconds. second spell from Mark Richardson. He scores to tie it and then he scores to win it what in overtime. Play, what a play. Play from Ben O'Connor. Richardson just wide open. Everyone was around Dowd and, the, and the, uh, the other forward, I'm not sure who it was. And he beat the goalie, Dukanic, five hole, five hole low. Whole game, what were we saying? Shoot low, big goalie. Absolutely fantastic. Well, what a start for Great Britain and that will build great belief. Everybody's sitting around there looking at Mark Richardson. Robert Dow's got his helmet off. He's shaking his head. He, he's like, how did you not get that? You got robbed. Even Farmer's looking at him now, though. Yeah. <laughs> it'll be, it'll it'll be, take that off him. Ben, ben Bounds should just skate over and give it to Mark Richardson. <laughs> he's getting a, a tap on the pass. You know what? He had a good game, Ben No, Bounce. he did have a good game. He pulled off some, he did pull off some great saves, too. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the national anthem of Great Britain.
Mark Richardson, congratulations. In all your years playing for GB, have you known a comeback like that? No, I haven't. I mean, it was a great game. I mean, we played so well the whole game that we, we deserved that ending. I mean, I didn't think we'd uh, imagined it would be as crazy as that, but uh, we got the win and that's what counts. Not renowned for your goal scoring, Richie, but the two in the, what, two in about 23 seconds in the end. Oh, I know, I don't think I scored two goals in a game for a long, long time, let alone the 16 seconds, where it was. But no, I mean, boys played so well that if we would have come away from that game with nothing, you know, it wouldn't have been right. So credit to every guy and, you know, Bounty back there was superb all game and deserved his man of the match. And, you know, but we still got things to, to work on and we'll build on that and we'll be even better. Pete Russell said he wanted you to play with passion. He wanted you to have that identity. Uh, did you feel that you did as a team tonight? Oh, of course. I mean, you can see the guys at the end there. You can see the passion, like how much it meant to every guy and, you know, the whole staff. Um, Andy's really happy right now. So, uh, no, it was, it was great. It will give you great, great sort of hope. Well, not hope, but great enthusiasm for the tournament because last year I lost 4-0 to these guys. You've just beaten them in overtime, Richie. Yeah, I mean, it's not the end of the world, uh, you know, if you lose the first game. But, you know, if you get that first win, I think it really pushes you on. And, uh, you know, the feeling's really good. And, um, you know, we take on Estonia tomorrow. It's going to be a really tough game, but we'll have that belief from winning today. And final question. Pete Russell, I talked about the uh, wanting that sort of uh, British spirit. And, you know, he really instills that in you. you know, do you think the guys feed off that? Oh, of course. I mean, everyone, you know... You know, every year everyone plays for each other. I think there's that feeling this year. You know, it, it's more British and it's and uh, everyone's together and uh, we're really excited for the rest of the tournament. Robert Dow, ten seconds to go in that game. Do you think you're going to win it? Um, you don't think you're going to win it, but you're just trying your best to get that goal to tie that thing up. And uh, like uh, like I said before, we, we've got players who play in those crucial situations week in and week out. They're the best players in the country, so I don't think anybody was panicking on the ice there. We had, we had a plan and we stuck to it, and it come off big. You lost four 0 last year to this team. What's different? I think we have belief this year. I think we've got a great set of guys. We've got speed. We just go at teams. We're hungry for the puck. Everybody chases down. And I think I think we've just got a good belief. We've got a great room right now. Everybody's up and chipper. So I can't put my finger on it, but it's working. Do you think you still would have been positive if you'd have lost? Because you know it was still a good performance, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. These tournaments, you don't have long enough to dwell on losses. You play the next day. You know what I mean? So I don't think I don't. I still think we would have been positive because you don't have long enough. But we we took it to them. I thought I thought we were better the team for every period. I don't think they controlled one period. I think they had good spells, but I think majority of the game we took it to them. Must have given you great belief though. What's happened here tonight? Oh, absolutely. But uh, you can't get too high with the highs and low with the lows. So we've just got to roll on to our next one, learn from our mistakes, and keep working hard. What do you expect from Estonia? Do you think there'll be pushovers or do you think that's a bit unfair? No, no, there's no pushovers in these tournaments. You come over and everybody plays at a high level of ice hockey, so there's no gimmies in ice hockey, no matter what, where you are, what, what rink you're playing on. So you're at the World Championships, you're playing against the best players in that country, so there's no walkovers. So Pete, you start with a win, but goodness gracious, did you ever make it tight? Yeah, it was a great game and showed a lot of character because they're the hardest ones to win when you can't score and that's against a good team as well. Do you think that's the toughest game that, that you were expecting out of all of the teams you were going to face? I think the career's a bit better than them, I think. I, I don't know, it's training, we find out in two hours, but I think they're all tough games. I just think today we proved what I asked for, we've got character and we, we, they don't stop. We work, work, work and we skate, skate, skated and they deserve that. And what was the biggest difference between the first two periods and I suppose that last seven or eight minutes? I, well, I thought the first two periods were there was, there was a lot of stops and starts. And the last ten minutes we went to a two-one-two and went really aggressive after them because it was two-nil and sure it maybe it turned the game around and went a bit freer. But we got hungry and I thought they were hungry the whole game. I thought we had a lot of scoring chances. And uh, but the last ten minutes was definitely we changed the full check a little bit and it made them scramble a little bit and they started instead of making passes out the zone, throwing the puck out the zone and we we were good in the walls and we controlled the puck and. We also started getting the puck to the net quicker and that helped us because that's where the goals generated from. And you started to juggle the lineups as well. It, yeah. you, you had to get really active, didn't you, as the I game wore on? Pick my best 10 guys. And, uh, you got it sometimes cut sometimes when you need to and we've done it, but you've seen there was nobody pissed off at the end of the game. They were all cheering and happy and that's what it's all about. If you look at the last World Championships, I think there was only one defenseman who scored a goal. You've got three goals from your defensive end before we've even started, really. Yeah, the D are doing a good job and we know that. I mean, that was one of the main things in the philosophy, to bring a D into the rush. And 
I mean, I would love to take credit for the last goal. It was my shot. I said to make DEDs in the four and four and activate the D every time. But Benny's pass was that what was, was that what you, you, you yeah. drew up on the board? Then? No, I never drew. I wish I drew that on the board. <laughs> that was just Ben O'Connor. He's that talented, isn't he? And we made a DED. He joined and he stepped up. And Richie joined a rush. And Ben found a pass that was just out of this world. But that's what he does. You know what I mean? He drives you nuts sometimes, and then he comes with special moments like that. I suppose he, he makes one and scores one. Yeah, he's, he's a great lad, Ben. I like Ben. We're lucky to have him. What about building from this? Because it, it's such an emotional win, isn't it, to, yeah. to take it like that? Two goals in 16 seconds, amazing. Yeah, we just need to come back tomorrow and people would say we should win tomorrow. We need to win tomorrow, that's the important thing. And we need to come back and relax tonight with some food and play our game. Because you know what, the Estonians have some skilled guys, they'll be dangerous to, we've got to watch that. But I, I like this team, I've said it all along, and they're really good people, they're honest. And I, I think when guys are honest like that, they get, the luck will come their way, and I think hard work today prevailed, in my opinion. And just finally, for you personally, what does it mean to have that first World Championship win under your belt? Oh, it's great, do you know what I mean? It's like, to win games like that the best way, do you know what I mean? I just, you, know, you start scrambling your mind in the bench, you try to think of things to do to try and help them, and you're cutting the lines, and then you turn around the next minute, you can't score for 59 minutes, you score one goal, and then you score two in 16 seconds. <laughs> it's a funny old game, isn't it? Well, wow, what a game that was for GB. The thoughts of Pete Russell there, what a happy coach you could tell that he was. Also, Robert Dowd and the man of the moment, Mark Richardson. Seth Bennett brought us the game on the BBC Sport website. Bring us some analysis now, Seth. We'll go down into the nitty gritty of the game, but not seen a comeback like that from GB for many a year. It was a performance of great character, wasn't it? And that's what this group has. It has a lot of character, also has a lot of belief. I know that's something that Pete Russell is very, very big on. And even though the game was starting to ebb down, I think there was always a feeling within the building that, that if GB got one, then there was every chance that they were going to go on and win the game. That's exactly what happened. And if you think they had two five on three opportunities, didn't take them. But when it came down to it, they managed to find that extra gear and they were able to get those two goals to take it to overtime and then eventually get the winner as well. But what did they do right in the game, first of all? What, what do you think were the good points? Well, it's skating. Skated really well for, for the whole of the game. They drew lots of power plays and that was mainly just down to the speed and keeping the feet moving. I think the other things they did pretty well was that they continued to work hard, didn't they? All the way through the game and they remained patient right the way down to the end. Even though the game was looking like it was going to slip away from them, they kept that belief there that they were going to score and that there was still every chance. So I think those are the things that they did particularly well. And then when it came down to those big moments, they did take their chances. But there were adjustments that were made as the game went on. If you, if you look in the first period, one of the things that GB didn't do well, particularly on the first five on three power play, they didn't get anybody in front of the net. And when you're facing goaltending of this standard, you're not going to beat him on a regular basis unless you're going to get enough traffic there. And if you watch as the game wore on, that's the thing that GB did really well. If you think about the, the equalising goal, if you think about the first goal, lots of traffic in front of the netminder, didn't get a clear sight of the, the puck, and that's what the big difference was. Interestingly, the game-winning goal, no traffic at all. Yeah, yeah. Richardson ju just wound up, and that, that was down to a wonderful play from Ben O'Connor. What a pass. Yeah. That, that's, that's what he brings though, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. And as the game wore on, Ben O'Connor was used limited in period one, period two. As the game got into those closing moments, the bench was shortened and those players like Ben O'Connor were used on a more regular basis. Richardson used on a more regular basis as Pete just tried to juggle Coach, Coach Russell, as I should perhaps call yeah. him more reverentially, yeah. uh, with, with the players, the 10 best players that were, were doing it for him on that day. Yeah. I think also though, as the, the game wore on, I, th I think the coach struggled to get Chris Blight into the game. I think he needs to work out how he can have a factor because if Chris Blight comes away here, he has to be somebody that gets enough ice time to have an influence. He didn't feature in either of the five on three power plays. So I, I think that that's something again, that when the coach goes away and he reflects on the game, he'll be looking at how he, he maybe he gets the, the, a bit more movement out there and distributes that puck a, a little bit more. But th there were a lot of things to like about this great Britain performance, but I think the big one is they just kept going, didn't yeah. they? Irrespective, yeah. down to the final five seconds, they believed they were going to be able to get a goal, and they yeah. did. I mean, it's a, I know it sounds daft because they've scored with five seconds to go on half a chance and then 11 seconds, but have they got to be more clinical? Absolutely. 
again, you look at chances that they had. Robert Farmer w was outstanding today, uh, in particularly in the five-on-three situations. He gave two no-look passes to the back door oh, yeah. to Colin Shields. Yeah, yeah. On each occasion, Shields wasn't able to, to finish them off. Now, that may have been slightly down to the fact that Puck was wobbling ever so slightly, but GB had opened the door there and you've got to finish those off. And that's not really a criticism of Shields. I think that that's just one of those things that if you are clinical, it's on the tape and it's in the back of the net. That didn't happen today. It will happen though as time goes on throughout this tournament. If GB are going to have success, look, they've got to score three goals a game. That, that, well, you said that before the tournament started. The, that's my and belief. On. My belief is they're going to score three goals a game through the majority. If they do that, they're going to have a chance of finishing in first or second position. That'll probably get you four wins through this tournament. But I think the big thing now is how do they recuperate? How do they get ready for Estonia? Which is going to be a completely different kind of challenge. Yeah, the skating is going to be there, but you're perhaps not going to have the size that you saw with the Croatians. You're not going to necessarily have some of the skill, but you are going to have a team that's full of energy and full of beans and full of belief because they got promoted last time round. So yeah. uh, again, they're going to be a bit of an unknown quantity in a way that Croatia weren't really. I think we all expected a lot, but the belief in this, this GB team is going to have increased from that performance. And, and I fully expect them to go out there and they should win in a more comfortable fashion. Hey, look, if it goes down to three seconds from the <laughs> end and they manage to tie it and then win it in overtime, I'll take that right now. But, but I think tomorrow's a game whereby Dowd, uh, you look at Dowd, you look at Lakovic, you look at, you know, will Peacock play a bigger role? Yeah. I mean, that's... Were you surprised it took him so long to put Peacock out there? I was surprised that he didn't get an opportunity on, on the big power play stretches. They had five power plays before eventually they, they scored. And, I think that that's something, again, that the coach may, may have to look at. You know, Peacock is a goal scorer. Mm. You have to use players in, in their best roles, if you like. He made a difference when he, when he played, I thought. Mm. I, and yeah. it'll be interesting to see how those lines are juggled as, uh, as the tournament goes on and how much ice time Peacock will get. He has a point to prove. Thanks, Seth. That's Seth Bennett. He does all the games on the BBC Sport website. I think tomorrow it will be General Manager Andy Buxton joining Seth. Really worth a listen. On, really worth a listen on the BBC Sport website. Also on Premier Sports, Paul Lady joining Aaron Murphy for that one. Plenty of ways to follow the games here, out here in Eindhoven and Team GB Twitter as well. You can follow all the games many different ways. That's about it for this edition of Ice Hockey UK TV, sponsored by McDonald's. The good news is from the first one. GB left it late, but they beat Croatia by three goals to two.